Hello everyone, this is Lockout S, and welcome to DCS World for the Mirage 2000C. Uh, for this video, we're going to be going ahead, going ahead and going over the special options, as well as the controls that you will need to definitely have keybind to your controller. So we're going to start off with the special options for the Mirage 2000C. Starting off over here on the left side with uh, simulation. Uh, disable gyro drift. Uh, this basically disables the uh, drifting of the internal gyros of the Mirage 2000C. This will in turn lead to uh, drifting of the uh, INS system. And when the INS system drifts, uh, you'll notice that your waypoints on the HUD uh, are not quite in the spots they should be. Now for short flights like I like to do, uh, this doesn't usually have much of an effect, which is why I disable it. Um, I don't usually fly for more than like an hour at a time. Uh, airborne uh if you're doing however like a super long flight like over like the entirety of the map um uh, i would actually go back in here and in the, uh, click this to enable gyro drift um just because that would be a fun extra challenge for like a super long flight but as i'm mostly flying um relatively short distances uh i like to leave this uh enabled just to make it just a little more simpler um it's one less thing i have to th worry about um you can However, in the mission editor, have this option enforced. So you might join a mission where uh, the, the mission creator enforces gyro drift. So that would override the option here. But uh, if the mission editor or creator or online server host uh, doesn't have that enabled for the Mirage 2000C, uh, you can go ahead here and under simulation, uh, have it disabled and it will stay disabled for that mission or online server you can also log engine physical data if you want to uh if you want to nerd out over the physical data that the engine is undergoing uh, you can go ahead and select that log option right there uh that produces a log file in saved games underneath logs but um, that just creates extra data uh and i want to keep it my uh poor hard drives are already probably uh having a fit with how much I put on them already, so we're going to ignore that. Uh, under cockpit realism, uh, you have automatic fuel detotalizer, and this basically, uh, there is an option in the, not an option, but in the Mirage 2000's fuel gauge, uh, you do actually have to set the uh, fuel um, detotalizer if it's not set, if you have external tanks. If you have external tanks, you actually have to increase the fuel, the amount of um, fuel in the detotalizer. Otherwise, um, you will get a good read on how much fuel is in the external tanks versus in the internal tanks. Uh, and that doesn't really usually come into play. Uh, definitely, uh, your uh, once your external tanks start uh, emptying out, uh, you'll know because then the internal tanks will decrease. But you won't have an idea of the um, how much fuel is in your external tanks and as a total system if you don't have uh, if you don't set that. So you can go ahead and have the uh, fuel detotalizer automatically set. So when you put on your external tank, um, it's automatically set for the right amount of fuel. Um, I do it just because it's another uh, another option to get myself into the air quicker. Um, you can uh, play around with the knobs and do it, but I like to set it to, again to automatic, uh, just to make my life a little bit easier on setup and startup. Uh, realistic frequency repeater. Uh, this is interesting. Um, this is something that came into a, a somewhat more recent patch. Uh, in DCS world, uh, the frequency repeater up on the Mirage 2000C's uh, front dashboard that repeats the frequency of the radio selected, uh, either of green or red radio. Uh, there's a quick uh, quick note: Mirage has two radios. Uh, they are known as green and red. Uh, green is the V UHF radio, and uh, red is the uh, just plain uh, is a just a UHF radio. Uh, one of those two radios, I believe, is the red radio with a realistic frequency repeater will not show uh, the frequency. It'll just be a bunch of asterisks and you'll only see the frequency of the green radio. Um, so that's selected with realistic. Um, I like to leave it unselected just because I don't really, uh, uh, you can figure out what frequency the red radio is on uh, without this, uh, with the uh, realistic uh, frequency repeater enabled. Uh, you just go to your kneeboard and look up on your kneeboard um, uh, whatever the frequency, the list of frequencies up on there. Uh, but that takes up a lot of your screen space and it's kind of annoying. So unless you have some other methodology to look up the uh, radio frequency of the red radio relatively easily, 
I like to leave this off just so that way um, you can uh, look you can look at your frequency repeater and also get the uh, red radio's uh, frequency down pat. Um, I would also do this for training purposes, uh, just to troubleshoot, make it easier for you to troubleshoot uh, whether or not you're tuning into the right frequency on that channel. You also have a realistic VTP cone of vision. Um, I do have this enabled uh, just because it uh, it's the radar screen, so I kind of want that. Uh, I'm going to leave that setting alone. Uh, I generally tend to leave this, all the sensor stuff alone, uh, just because that's how it is in real life. So I want I want the sensors to be realistic. Uh, we also have the cone of vision size and the cone of vision height, all that set up. Um, I believe this is more about the display than the actual uh, radar performance, but because it's dealing with the radar, uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, you can have the RWR uh, play a more distinctive launch alert tone. Uh, I'm going to leave that as is, um, unselected, so that I'm playing the natural sound, the natural uh, radar RWR sounds from the um, system. So these are the real life uh, versions I'm getting through the, the headset. I forgot to leave that in. And randomized radar channel at spawn. Uh, this is just a quality of life feature um, so that if I'm on an online server, um, the RDI channel, then my radar's channel, will be randomized so that uh, if another Mirage player is on the uh, server, there's less likely a chance that I'm going to spawn it, uh, we're going to have the same radar channel, which would cause interference. So this is, again, something more of a quality of life thing. Um, more of a quality of life thing for the radar channel. Plus, if I have the computer randomize it, it'll be a little bit more randomized than what I would have picked. So that way, there's less chance of uh, getting up into the air and then realizing um, me and another uh, wingman have the same radar channel and we're just jamming each other with it. Uh, for performance, uh, to make the Mirage perform a little bit uh, easier, uh, make it a little less uh, taxing on the system, you can have the you can deselect the radar sensing map objects. However, that is a real life thing that the uh, Mirage 2000C will sometimes uh, pick up. Sometimes it'll pick up returns from ground objects and then register them as a uh, possible ground uh, res and register them as possible like um, blips or like uh, contacts. Now, granted, those contacts will fade over time and uh, they usually pop in and pop right out um, as clutter. So you can go ahead and disable it, and you won't get that cluttering effect. Um, but it is a realistic feature of the radar. So I'm actually going to put that in. Uh, again, quality like minor quality of like stuff like the uh, frequency repeater. I like to leave um, a quote unquote fake version, uh, just because it's a quality of life thing. Plus, I do want to uh, leave this guys uh, leave this up for you for uh, training purposes. Um, other than that, but if you want to actually have the, with the radar stuff like that, uh, I definitely want to keep that to be as realistic as possible. User interface, uh, cockpit language, uh, you can have it set to default. I'm going to set it uh, back to English. Um, this way, uh, you, uh, you this way because I am an English speaker, I can, have, can I can read the cockpit a little bit easier. Uh, the labels will be in English, so it's a little bit easier to understand and quickly identify uh, the different labels. So I'll set that to English. Uh, you will have a you can show P hit a PCN hidden digit entry message. Uh, this is basically, it'll show a message in the top right corner um, with the full coordinates that I put into the INS system for uh, when I, for either my startup or my um, either startup procedure to uh, calibrate this, uh, the INS system to my exact location or from entering in a waypoint along my waypoint path. Uh, this, way I, this way I know and can confirm what the system typed in is what I knew I typed in to make sure there's no, uh, I didn't fat finger in a response. Uh, PT, uh, radio PTT short press toggles menu. Uh, this is a quality of life feature. Uh, I'm going to disable it because I, I, I use um, a different radio PTT button. So you can have your radio push a talk button. Uh, if you press it, if you do a short press, uh, it'll toggle the, uh, it'll toggle the, uh, toggle the radio menu that'll pop up in the top right corner. Uh, that is just a feature that way you don't have to have a thousand different radio buttons. Uh, Bound. Um, I'm going to disable it just because I have a separate uh, radio push to talk button bound. Uh, external tank uh, refuel fix. Uh, I'm going to enable that because that fixes a, D a possible DCS bug. And then down here for the UI, you can uh, have your throttle cutoff detent, uh, your after your throttle afterburner detent. Um, these has different detents for the uh, different stages of the throttle and afterburner. Um, you can have different again more uh, more, uh, more finer control of how your uh, 
stick uh, operates. You can adjust the speed of how the mouse wheel adjusts different uh, factors within the uh, cockpit. Because sometimes you will use your mouse button to like scroll through different uh, settings. You can adjust the speed there. And you can also have uh, the display down here. Uh, where you can, if you want to, uh, the VTB, which is your radar display, uh, you can make some of the VTB items a bit larger. So then that way, uh, if you're if you don't want to, if you're a little bit harder seeing, uh, you can go in there and you can make those um, that finer text a little bolder so you can actually see it. So that's all these special settings and how I'm going to be flying my Mirage for the most part. Um, again, really the uh, the two big things that are um, that, I, that I'm going to set up that are probably different than like the, for the most uh, realistic option is disabling the gyro drift and then automatic, uh, the realistic uh, frequency repeater and the automatic field detotalizer. Um, again, I'm just doing that for myself, just uh, quality of life things, and I can get the aircraft up and running a little bit easier and uh, whatnot. Next part, uh, the controls. I'm going to go over the, all the controls I bound to my uh, joystick. These are the uh, highest priority controls. Uh, if I mention, if I see a control on the keyboard, uh, and it's higher, that's high priority, I'll point that out. Uh, let's see here. So, air brakes. I have the air brake off, which pulls the air brakes in. And I have the air brake on, which deploys the air brakes as two separate bound buttons. Uh, this way, I can quickly activate and deact uh, deactivate and then um, activate the air brakes on a uh, whim. So, when I'm coming in for landing or I'm in a situation where I need to slow down fast, I have quick and easy access to those. Autopilot disconnect. If you want to turn off the autopilot and not have the system yell at you, uh, you can go. You have to go ahead and have an autopilot disconnect bound. So I set that to one of my joystick controls. Plus, I also um, this is I believe a you can have this button do two uh, two different things. Uh, you can have it for autopilot disconnect and the exceed elastic limit. So I just have that one bound because it uh, one button to do multiple things. My uh, flight stick isn't exactly the most uh, powerful or has the most amount of buttons. So I like to whenever I can uh, do multi-faceted uh, uh, controls when I can. Uh, CMN, CNM AA gun and CNM magic command the uh, Mirage to basically go into a, a dog type mode. Uh, AA gun on, uh, obviously commands the Mirage to go into a, a dog fight mode with the air to air guns and the CMN magic uh, orders the Mirage to go into a dogfight mode with the Magic IR missiles. Highly recommend uh, you definitely have these bound up. Uh, I believe Command AA Gun is the only way to get into the air-to-air -air guns. And CMN Magic might be the only way to get into the uh, Magic uh, modes. Uh, there might be another way through the PCA panel to actually activate the uh, Magic missiles, but... Uh, I would definitely have this bound uh, just because if you get into a, um, if you get pounced and all of a sudden you're in a dogfight and uh, mm -hmm. you need to switch from your Super, super 530, Super 50 uh, 530s or you switch from your air to ground attack into an air to air attack, um, having the air to air gun and magics, uh, being able to quickly select them or switch between the two is very important. And also being able to swap out of the CM, CNM uh, weapons uh, setup with uh, CMN neutral is how you get out of the CMN uh, dogfight mode. Uh, I have that selected uh, just to a plain uh, button. That way I can quickly uh, get out of the CMN mode and back into a uh, normal flight regime. Decoy panic release. Uh, this is a predetermined uh, set program that you can hit and it'll deploy a, I believe a small amount of chaff and flares. For if you just need, if you know that there is a uh, if you know you got a missile launched on you and you're not quite sure what kind of a missile it is and it's just all of a sudden that something just popped up on you you can go ahead and hit insert key and that'll uh, panic deploy uh, some uh, countermeasures. If you want to deploy a there are there are here ten different programs for decoys and if you want to deploy one of those predetermined uh, preset programs. You can go to D decoy program release and that'll release that decoy program. Uh, the programs get you more control over what gets released. There are still only 10 different programs to choose from, but 
Um, and it's way more finer control than what you'll get out of the Panic release. So I decided to go for Program release, uh, generally because you'll want to know, um, you'll want to have a good idea of what you're fighting up against going into the situ combat situation. So you'll want to actually uh, go through the programs and pick the program before you get into combat. So that way you'll have this program release all set and ready to go. Uh, drag shoot deploy. Whenever you're landed, you want to you want to remember the P key is your friend. If you have the drag shoot equipped, rather than the extra countermeasure pod that you can equip in that hard point. So having the the uh, drag shoot memorized as the P key is a good idea. I would bound, bind this to your HOTAS unless you have a button that you're not going to use a whole lot, mainly because you don't want to accidentally hit it mid-flight. If you deploy the drag shoot mid-flight, you will lose the drag shoot and I do believe the drag shoot automatically disconnects, and then you won't have your drag shoot when you come down the land. V to eject, uh, left control and E three times. If you need to jettison your ordinance, it's left shift and E. Um, hopefully you will never have to do this. Hopefully you get off your weapons uh, before you're jumped, but if you're jumped uh, before you get into that combat area and there's no one to protect you, left shift and E, and I believe left shift and E will uh, jettison all of your uh, it for a certain for a certain um, emergency jettison usually always jettisons your your underground ordinance it might jettison your super 530 r's um once i get to my jettison tutorial we will, we will go over this in more detail uh detail um there's also a way to jettison ordinance uh without doing the emergency jettison it's a bit more selective going down here uh gun trigger is uh, my trigger button and the gun trigger only works you I think the gun I'm pretty certain the gun trigger um, only works the gun it might also work rockets uh, but in general uh, the gun trigger um, for a lot of aircraft a lot of modern aircraft there is a gun trigger that only works the gun and then there's a separate missile launch button or our basically ordnance uh, release button so the gun trigger is a separate uh, button because as we come down here see here um i will cover this one next uh after this one of uh, the microbe i'm not quite sure how to pronounce because it it's a it's a me c r o b trigger um i like to call it the micro b trigger uh second stage this is your ordinance drop this is what will fire your missiles drop your bombs stuff like that uh so have this bound to another button that's fairly easily uh accessed so that's my uh, that's one of my big buttons on the bottom of my uh, control area up here on the on the uh, stick. Hold on, there we go. All right, back there. Uh, magic slave. There, this is a very useful button. Uh, there's a button to slave the magic missiles onto a radar lock or onto a IR signature that it has picked up. So that's a there's a magic slave button. This also designates. This is also your air to ground designation button. And this is also your INS position update button. So. I like to have that on a fairly prominent button because uh, if you're doing your attack rounds, you want to quickly um, get your air, air to ground designation off on the target, as well as uh, slave your magic onto a target if it's not already been ha slaved to it. Going down further, we have a if you need to unlock your magic missiles, and for instance, if you've locked up a friendly. Uh, with a magic by accident, or if a friendly uh, flies in front of you while you're trying to lock up another target and the magic says lock it, uh, you definitely want to have magic uh, unlock enabled. So I have that sort of as a, I have it on the uh, save button that my magic slave is. So that way, I, if I know if I have to unlock, I can do that. A very important button is nose wheel steering. I always have it set to the same button in almost all my aircraft. And the important thing about nose wheel steering is with the Mirage 2000C, it is also your IFF interrogate button. So it's important not only for uh, getting our, it's not only important for navigating on the ground, it's also equally important because this is how you uh, interrogate tar interrogate um, your contacts to make sure they are hostile or friendly. I also have uh, buttons bound for radar antenna down and up. So I could slew the radar antenna to point upwards or downwards in order to look above or below its normal horizontal field of vision. 
I also have buttons to make the azimuth, the radar azimuth, uh, narrower or wider to either scan down a very narrow range or a wider range. And if I want to uh, de determine how many, how the width of the, the height of the radar scan, if I want to scan uh, four bars of height, or if I only want to scan uh, one bar of height or two bars of height, I could go ahead and have the radar scan line increase or decrease with these two buttons here. So these are all my radar controls to get the radar to do what I want and what I need it to do uh, in order to see the target. Also, uh, I have a whole bunch, bunch of buttons here for slowing the target designation carrot, which is TDC. So target, des target designator carrot down, up, right, left, and depress to lock the target. Trim up and down are I have set I have set trim down and trim up. I don't usually do trim left right or the rudder left or right. It I don't ever really seem the need to use it, and I always have trouble centering my trim uh, afterwards. So I generally tend to trim up and down, and then uh, use the aircraft to um, use a little bit of roll left or right or stick movement to do the rest of the trim. Uh, let's see here. There we go. If I did have more um, buttons, I would actually do a lot more with the trim work because this is how this is important for getting your aircraft to fly level when certain things don't exactly play nicely with each other. For instance, if your autopilot goes down, this is how you actually fly straight and level for a long period of time without stressing yourself or your arm. I have the uh, UHF red radio on one button and the green radio on another. And these are, by the way, the uh, radio menu buttons. So for single player, this, these are the buttons well, I use to bring up menus in the single player menu or uh, on online servers to bring up the uh, radio menu. Uh, so actually, uh, I don't, I use a, um, a, ded a dedicated button on all across all my aircraft for uh, push to talk on the uh, SRS. So, I use that for push to talk, and then I use these two buttons to talk uh, in single player missions to various AI assets or radio menus or tower, stuff like that. So it is kind of annoying that we have to have a separate radio menu for um, talking to the AI assets versus the players in the in multiplayer servers, but it is what it is. Theoretically, if I was doing a long multiplayer session, I might even uh, remove these and like swap out the controls, but that'd be a bit annoying. And last but not least, uh, we have weapon system command aft, forward, and depress. The important thing to know about aft, forward, and depress is that this is how you uh, manage some of your uh, air to ground ordnance. This is also how you manage, I believe, the um, various ACM radar modes, so that uh, whenever you're behind a target and you're trying to just get the target to like lock up um, automatically, uh, you can go ahead and use aft, forward, and aft and forward, and it'll bring up different um, automatic locking modes for the radar to get your uh, missile locked up fast, uh, faster than it is playing with the uh, radar scope. So these are definitely important for air-to-air -air dog, uh, dog fights as well as getting. Um, some controls set up for air-to-ground weapons. And that's it for setting up uh, controls and special options for the Mirage 2000C. Um, go ahead, uh, make sure all these controls are set up. These are going to be your most important controls. Um, you can go ahead and also set up a whole lot of other controls uh, here. However, the most of the other controls that are um, here are able to be selected uh, in the cockpit as various switches, and that's one of the reasons why I do like the Mirage 2000C, is that the Mirage 2000C, it is a modern fighter in a lot of ways, but it does also have a lot of switches, so you're not entirely reliant on having, like, an insanely complicated, um, HOTAS setup to do, um, to manage all of the screens and all the setup stuff, so, thankfully, uh, if you, uh, if you don't, you can, there's a lot of stuff here on this control page that you can just look in the cockpit and control from there, so... With that being said, uh, this is LockOS, signing out from 
DCS, and I'll see you on the next episode where we do a cockpit overview of the Mirage 2000C.